Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well in, in these uh, certainly different times. I uh, really appreciate everyone taking time of the day to join today's webinar. Uh, again, my name is Matt St. John. I'm going to take you through um, Starship with the integration to Sage 300. Uh, I hope everyone uh, had a great show. Um, add in power. I you know I definitely did. It was another uh, fantastic show and hope everyone got to learn a lot and you know take home some good to bits of information. Um, again, today's webinar, what I'm going to do is go through a quick um, demonstration of Starship, uh, that integration to Sage 100, but really brief overview. I'll try to dive into as much as I can, but most certainly after our call, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put up my contact information. I'd be more than happy to do a live one-on-one -on -one demo. Um, also, there is a question pane, so if there is anyone with questions, please feel free to type those in as I go along, and at the end, um, I'll address any, any questions. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, let me, let me get going here. Uh, real quick, we're going to talk a little bit about V Technologies as a company. So as you see, we've been developing integrated shipping solutions since 1987. Uh, pardon me. Uh, we are a UPS-ready provider and a Platinum FedEx compatible solution. Of course, I've uh, been working with the Sage the software for over about 20 years now. Uh, as you see, we are a Sage Gold Development Partner as well as a Sage Certified Solution. Uh, now, V Technologies is a company. We are located in Connecticut, and all of our sales support development is done in-house, so, so we're not outsourcing anything. And also, as you see, we have about 10,000 customers that are using our integrated uh, shipping solution. So at V Technologies, all we do is integrated shipping solutions. So uh, really, again, being done, doing it 33 years now, uh, I can say we, we really know what we're doing. Uh, so brief overview of the integration, kind of some, some of the key points. Of course, I'll get into this all, all in the actual demo, but uh, as you're going to see, it's going to be a, a plug-and-play, bi-directional interface. It's going to offer you multiple different workflows, uh, multi-carrier, multi-mode. So with Starship, um, as a shipper, nice thing is I just work inside the Starship program, and I can process all my different type of shipments right through one user interface. So LTL, international, you know, parcel, uh, third-party, collect, so on and so forth. Um, I'll get into the customized rules about how we can use ship via freight and printing rules on the demo. Um, also integrations with EDI and warehouse management solutions. So EDI integration will simply send all the required uh, shipment info back into Sage. So the EDI, or we can even create an XML file. Uh, but point being is that EDI solution that you might be using is automatically going to take that info so you could automatically generate ASN. As you see, Starship can auto automatically print GS1128 labels if you're doing, uh, you're working with trading partners where those are required. Uh, so nice thing with that, it's gonna print right at time of shipment instead of waiting later on when after the, what, the front office maybe processes the order information through the EDI solution, you know, it returns ASN and then those 128 labels. So again, Starship could do that right at time of shipment. Uh, with a WMS, a uh, nice thing with that is, hey, however I define my shipment on a handheld device using a WMS system, uh, that's how Starship's going to bring it in. So all that item box detail automatically going to populate inside of Starship for me. And as you see, world-class support, again, we've, we've been doing integrated shipping solutions for a long time. Uh, our team of guys, a great group of guys, really know what they're doing, not only in, uh, experience with Starship, but also with the ERP systems as well. Right. And here's just a snapshot of some of the carriers that Starship does integrate with. So with our integrations, they're live integrations, uh, no staging tables, not like we're staging pricing. Uh, so it's going to be your live negotiated contract rate. Uh, we also get into uh, uh, maybe with LTL, like electronic pickup, where it will automatically notify the carriers that we have a shipment ready to go. Uh, so nice thing with those integrations, again, live rate shopping. Um, any of the electronic features that the carriers offer, like I just mentioned, um, like electronic pickup, electronic tendering, hey, maybe you want to use the carrier's bill rating. So with those integrations, Starship fully supports those features. Also integrate with shopping carts as well as marketplaces. These are some of the uh, integrations. Uh, so with a, with a marketplace or a shopping cart, nice thing is what Starship can do is take that shipment information and of course pass it back into Sage but it will also upgrade, upload it to, say, a shopping cart or an e-commerce 
uh, cart. Okay, so a lot of different options with Starship, as you see, almost um, certainly a solution that can grow with you. All right, so now let me just jump into the demo. What I'm going to do is exit out of here, bring up my demo machine. All right, and before I jump into this, one thing I'm going to start back in sales order entry. Uh, so included with Starship is the ability to rate quote right from sales order entry. So if we have the need for our customer service reps or you know front office employees, maybe they want a rate shop, you know, a time of order. Maybe if I was doing a quote, I wanted to be able to see the, the rates. Uh, so as you see here, we add this rate quote button. And as soon as I click that, what's going to happen is our Starship rate quote screen will pop up. So again, this is included, requires no additional user seats or licenses. And from here, you know, the customer service rep can do address validation. Even in the packaging, if they know, they can actually build the box that these go into. So maybe here I know, yep, all these items go into a large box. Um, but as you can see, they can build the boxes, build the packaging. And then, of course, down below is where they'd be able to see the live rating. Okay. Now, any changes here? Maybe I've decided to go with a different carrier service. Uh, maybe the address gets changed due to validation. Once I click Apply, Starship will automatically update the sales order. So that's one of the nice features that is included with Starship. I'll jump back on my Starship machine, and here is the Starship program. So as I mentioned, as a shipper, I can just work inside of the Starship program. Technically, I don't need access to Sage. Uh, most of our clients pay out in the warehouse at our shipping machines. They just have Starship installed. Now, with those different workflows, we can pull by sales orders. We can pull by invoice. We can even pull by customer numbers. Now, most clients, it is by sales order numbers. Over here is our source document. So if I happen to have maybe my pick sheet has that sales order number barcoded, I can even just use a regular plug and play wedge type scanner to scan in the source information. Um, now here, I'm just gonna for the sake of demo manually look up an order, uh, but also we can get into applying lookup filters. If I wanna narrow my search results as a shipper and how I set up Starship, that is by the shipper's login. So maybe one shipper wants a different look and feel uh, they can most certainly set up customized Starship for their, their needs. Um, now, apply filters. Over here, this group related button, I'm going to click on this. As you see, Starship fully supports order consolidation. So this is telling me, hey, you know, in this case, you have these four orders going to Ontario. I can actually then you know, just quickly select the one checkbox or mainly select a couple of these. But point being is Starship fully supports order consolidation. So these are saying, hey, all these are going to the same ship too. Let's consolidate them, save time, save money. Okay. So I'll uncheck that. And then what I'm going to do is, you're going to see here, I can even sort by any of these columns. Uh, mine, I'm displaying all the columns. But again, we can customize the look and feel by removing columns from this little drop down. Um, so what we'll do is just quickly process the LTL shipment. And again, I could scan the sales order number up top. I can either click this checkbox, click Create Shipment. Or what I'll do here is just find a shipment, we'll slide over, and we'll click the truck icon. And what Starship's going to do is simply we're data mapping the fields from Sage. So we're going to automatically bring in the order header, line item detail. So here's the source information. Out of the box, Starship does fully support uh, multiple companies, multiple locations, warehouses. There's all my source info. Sender information, simply this company that we're sending this from. Now, if anyone out there is doing blind or drop shipments where we have to show that the order is coming from someone else, uh, maybe in this case, Walmart, Starship fully supports that. Now, I just did this as a manual process, but most certainly Starship can be set up to automatically maybe look at a Sage user defined field or a different Sage field. But point being is it can automatically, again, simply data mapping fields. We can tell Starship, look at a different Sage field. I want you to, you know, if it says Walmart, automatically select Walmart from this dropdown. Okay. So this whole process of blind shipment, changing the sender information can be automated. Now next door is the recipient. Of course, that's coming from the ship too, from the sales order. Uh, as I mentioned, Starship will do address validation. We do validate zip plus four, as well as validate the residential commercial flag. Transportation, just mapping that from the ship via from this order. So in this case, Starship knows based off the ship very via to select the carrier service account billing information. Now, if anyone's doing third party or collect shipment, Starship can automate that as well, where it's going to automatically come in, change the billing type. As you see in this little drop down here, it's already automatically selected uh, my company, American Business Futures. 
Now I have my system set up. Again, I'm just, this drop down field is just part of Starship's database where I could store the customer's account. Right, well, first address information, but also account information. So my system, I'm just simply having Starship take this drop down field and look at a Sage field to automatically select that. You know, I do have clients, some clients, even the billing account. Oh, we have that living maybe in the FOB field because we don't use them. Um, so again, Starship can be changed and automatically you know, pull information from different Sage fields. Actually, let me just change that back to recipient, uh, prepaid, and then we'll move on to the shipment option. So shipment details, simply all the shipment details. Uh, again, if I had insurance flagged inside of uh, inside a stage, Starship could automatically select that for me and also bring in maybe a declared value, can auto-populate that. Maybe we want it based off of the sales order total or maybe based off just the shipment total, again. As you're going to see here, the name of the game with Starship is to help streamline the shipment process. So less things as a shipper I have to click, touch, type, the better. Um, now these fields can also be defaulted. So here I'm using the UPS Quantum View email. I have it always selected. It's always bringing in email addresses. And I have my system set up, as you see, just to use the carrier-generated email if there was a delay or an exception. And I'll show you why that in a little bit. Now, over here, these are just user-defined fields. Starship has user-defined fields that you can also use. And these currently are in the shipment detail. Uh, they can be on the order detail, line item detail. But again, if we needed to bring in additional information from Sage, we could use these user-defined fields. And by default, this is what they're normally named. As you see, I, we can rename them and um, you know, bring in additional information. Shipment status, of course, just simply the status of the shipment. Here, if I needed to, I could change the pickup date. If this was an LTL shipment, I would be able to change the pickup date, even the pickup time. Um, because again, with a lot of those LTL carriers, we're gonna automatically tell Starship, or Starship's automatically gonna tell them, hey, we have a shipment ready to go, You know, come send the truck. Now, packaging, this is where we can get into the item to box detail, which inside Starship is not a requirement. Um, of course, as long as we have a weight, Starship's not gonna throw an error. I, but again, don't need to have items in boxes. Now in my system here with this blanket, as you see, it's already been packaged for me. So uh, the reason for that is I have what we call a packaging scenario set up. And packaging scenarios can be set so Starship automatically learns them or I can manually set them up. But in this case, Starship knows, oh, they're shipping a blanket. Every time they ship that blanket, it, they put it in a box called blanket. So it's automatically packaged it for me. Now my, my system's also set up that Remaining items, if there's no packaging scenario, they just come into a default box, which is custom packaging. So that's the true default box. Uh, I could select a, a different default box, but in this drop down here, this is just Starship's database where you can set up your own custom packaging. And that can be boxes, bags, bales, pallets, what have you. Um, and then from here, maybe I know, oh, this pillow also fits in the blanket box. As you see, simple drag and drop. And then we'll just keep the the dinner plates in a medium box. Now, quantities, if I do allow my shipper to say back order an item, they could back order that right at time of shipment here. And on right back, Starship would also back order the invoice, sales order, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now with the custom packaging, the nice thing is dimensions are automatically gonna populate for your shipper. Now we have the actual weight and in my system, I'm just pulling weights from stage. Of course, if I had a scale that was integrated, we could pull the weights right from a scale. I could even manually type this in. Now, with the dimensions, as you see, I have actual weight, and then next door, I have the bill weight. So what Starship is doing is automatically making the dimension calculation based off of the carrier's uh, DIM calculation. Okay, so in this case, this is UPS, and here where I'm saying this is six pounds, but technically, due to DIM weights, this one is actually 19 pounds. So when this goes out, this is gonna go out at the 19 pounds, that way later on, I'm not gonna get that fee that says, oh, you sent that one box out at six, it should have been 19, here's the difference. Okay, so that's the item to box detail. And again, if we we're using a WMS, this would automatically come in already defined however I define my shipment on the handheld scanning device. So one nice feature to integrate with a WMS. A line item detail, just drill down into this. Uh, now, by default, what Starship will do is start storing your inventory items. 
Now, the reason we do this, and again, my system, item, description, unit of measure, values, quantity, all that's coming from Sage. Now, maybe inside Sage, I don't have a spot for, say, freight class, NMFC codes, or even if this happens to be international, unit of country or manufacturer. As you see, Starship has its own database where we can store all the required information that might not be living inside of Starship or inside a stage. So here, uh, the Schedule B code. You know, I have a lookup. I can, if that was missing, I could quickly come in, look up. And here, I can do a custom query if I want to with filters. Uh, but point being, if that information was missing, I could select it, and then it, when I process this order, next shipment, next that has this item on it, this info will automatically populate. Okay. All right. Now down below is the live rate shopping. So as you can see here, I have UPS and FedEx set up, and it's showing me you know, my live negotiated rates under the contract charges, published list rate. So that's the published list rate, number of business days. Now I have my system turned on to automatically run the rating. Uh, but you can also take that one step further and do what we call ship via rules, where I could tell Starship, uh, for example, hey, you know what, you automatically rate shop all my shipments, and I always want you to select the least expensive carrier service, or maybe least expensive, least amount of business days. So it's just another way Starship can actually streamline that whole shipment process. Now, over here, apply charges. In Starship terms, that's simply plus or minus any freight rules. So with Starship, we allow you to set up freight rules, and they can be based off of list charges or your live contract charges. But up here in this little drop down, this is just all the breakdown of the different charges. Um, here I have a couple freight rules set up. So here's one. It's a 10% discount. Uh, the trigger for this, it's just simply looking at a user-defined field. I created inside Sage a simple checkbox. So because it's selected, this customer is receiving a 10% discount. And then the next rule is, oh, looks like we have all the way down to line item detail. So here's a flat rate. So as you see, freight rules can be flat rate, min maxes, uh, percentages, and the trigger fields can go all the way down to line item. So this is for those plates. I'm saying, hey, anytime there's plates on an order, they're fragile, I have to use additional bubble wrap or packaging material. So let's help cover for that cost. And here, Starship's automatically gonna add a flat rate of $3. Okay, I'm going to kind of drag this out, showing you all the different options, but really, uh, we're going to bring in our order, again, maybe get into doing some item to box detail, moving items around, you know, maybe scroll down, do some rate shopping, but when we're ready, we can simply click the ship and process button, or under the shipment drop down, as you see, we have shortcut keys, I can save a shipment, I can even ship and create a return label at the same time, but in this case here, we'll just do the ship and process. Now, in a live environment, of course, right now, what would be happening is all my shipping documents, labels, so on and so forth, would be printing. Um, for the sake of the webinars and demos, I actually just preview everything. And I also use our smart label. And as you can see, a smart label generate a shipment label and a packing list together. So this usually goes to a laser printer. But most certainly, you can send a shipment label to a thermal printer or printers. You know, some clients, hey, my UPS labels go to one printer. The FedEx ones go to a, a different zebra printer or a thermal printer because they're a different size. The Starship fully supports that. Packing list, you have the option that can also go to a thermal printer, or of course we can send it to a laser printer, or maybe you just want to save it to a network share folder. Okay, so box one. Here's box two. Uh, also on our packing list, uh, we allow you to customize the documents that Starship generates. Okay, so packing lists, bill lading forms, commercial invoices, NAFTA forms, so on and so forth. Uh, we allow you to create unlimited templates, and also on each template, you can get into assigning printing rules. So again, maybe this was for Walmart, and Walmart wants their logo on the packing list. I can simply create a template for Walmart, assign that printing rule, and then, of course, Starship would only generate that document or those sets of documents if the shipment was for, say, a Walmart. Because this was international, as you see, Starship can generate commercial invoices. Uh, of course, we do fully support, for example, with like UPS, they do the paperless uh, invoicing where they electronically deliver this. We do support that, but Starship can also generate those documents. Right? So up top, all the order header information can automatically populate. And in this one, I've customized so it's signed and dated. Again, as a shipper now, I don't have to stop and manually fill out any of that information. Same thing with the NAFTA form or the certificate of origin. Down below here, I've just customized it so it's signed, name, date, and again, save some time, 
let my shipper just print it out, grab it, and it's good to go. And that's the same as I mentioned, Starship. If it was an LTL shipment, I could do billing forms. You know, we support VIX in straight version. Uh, we also support doing pallet labels, barcoded bill lading and pro numbers on those pallet labels. Okay. All right, so again, I ship and process. As a shipper, I'm gonna receive my shipping documents and then Starship's automatically gonna take me back to the main screen or really just do that rinse repeat, you know, move on, go through that whole process again, get the next order, next shipment out the door. So what I'll do is jump back into my Sage machine and I'll show you the write back. So I'm gonna go into SO invoice data entry. I'm gonna bring up my last invoice. So as soon as my shipper processes a shipment through Starship, Starship is automatically gonna create the invoice inside of Sage for the front office. So here's that invoice, sales order 222, what we just created. And on the header tab, here's the tracking information. Starship's gonna write back all the tracking, carrier, weight, freight, comments up to you. Now we're dropping this right back into Sage's tables. So I can even use their little hyperlink here to track this package. Or again, if I'm doing item to box detail, I could actually drill down and see what was in each package. And then also on the total tab, freight amount, plus or minus if we had any freight rules set up. Um, so we're gonna write back that freight amount right into the freight amount field. Uh, if there's any scenarios where we do not wanna write back freight, and for example, maybe we are charging freight already on a website, and uh, so the freight's already gonna be on the sales order. We can simply set up write back rules to tell Starship, hey, do not overwrite the freight amount. Okay. So that's the write back. Uh, I showed you a great quote from sales order entry. Uh, like I said, that is included. I'll also show you our e-notify program. Bring this up. I might have to log back in here. Uh, so with e-notify, this is, again, also included. Requires no additional user seats or licenses. But with e-notify, you can design your own custom email template to send out to your customers. So this is why a lot of our clients and why my demo system set up to use the carrier-generated ones for just delays or exceptions because I'm sending my customer my branded email with my company logo, not UPS, not FedEx. And very easy to create these, pull in stage fields like PO, sales order number, maybe let them know how it's going, um, package breakdowns here, estimated delivery dates coming from the carrier so it's accurate. If I'm doing that item to box detail, I can show them what was in each package. Tracking number here, these are hyperlinks, so this would send them back to the carrier's website. Um, with these, just like the printing documents, I can set up unlimited templates. And then instead of printing rules, I can actually get into doing emailing rules. So here, you know, I have a little promo code. You know, and of course, I can hyperlink that promo code, get the customer right back to my website. But maybe I only want this to go to certain customers. So I can create this template, assign that emailing rule. And then, of course, Starship would only send me this template to those certain customers. And also included in Starship is our dashboard program. So I'm just gonna log in here. Um, this is dashboard just coming through Starship. Now we also have this as the standalone, where again, it's included, requires no additional user seats and licenses. Uh, but as the standalone, of course now, you know, maybe I was in the front office and customer service rep wanted to access dashboard. They wouldn't be able to get into this rate and ship or set up anything like that. It would just be a standalone dashboard program. Uh, but as I mentioned, Dashboard is a reporting tool. Here we added a little heat map. Maybe I can see my hot spots of where all my shipments are going. Uh, I can also customize this. Here's just a quick overview. I have just a couple things set up here. But again, I can make this look and feel however I like, you know, as whoever I want to log into this. You know, they could set up their own login and make it look and feel you know, how, how they prefer. You know, here's some voided, voided ship packages rate delivery so this is going to actually show me any shipment that was wasn't delivered on time simply comparing guarantee delivery date to the actual delivery date that way i could run this you know, find out those shipments and then reach out to the, the carrier and try to get my refund for those late deliveries okay performance indicators and even top statistics here again completely customizable available for really anyone that you want to access this included no additional user seats or licenses required so with that being said again wanted to just do a pre brief overview of starship i will put up my contact information um so like i said if you have any 
questions, I'd like to schedule a more in-depth one-on-one demo, discovery call, more than happy to do that. And what I'll do in the meantime here, I'll slide over to see if anyone's asked any questions. All right. Doesn't look like there's any questions. Um, so really, again, I appreciate everyone taking time for this webinar. Um, again, I hope everyone stays well. And uh, feel free to reach out to me if you need anything else. Thanks so much. Bye.